Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about Section 5.2 and 5.3 of the California CDL Air Brake Manual. Had a request from Oziande to go over this manual, so this is the second video in a four-part series. Previous video went over the parts of the air brake system. This goes over the dual air brake system and the pre-trip inspection requirements that you need to do for the purposes of getting your license outside of the vehicle and inside of the vehicle. Just as a note, the tests that you are required to do inside of the vehicle are pure memorization. And what I suggest to students is go and get yourself some flashcards, write the name of the test on the front of the card, low air warning test, for example, put the details on the back. That way, when you're walking around and studying for the purposes of your license test and waiting for your significant other at the dentist office or at the shopping mall or wherever, you can take those cards out and work on memorizing the information that you need to know for the purposes of your road test. So that's what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to go over section 5.2 and 5.3 of the California CDL Air Brake Manual. Be right back with that information. Hi there, Smart Drivers. Welcome back. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about Section 5.2 and 5.3 of the California CDL Air Brake Manual. And the first part we're going to go over is the dual air brake system. Dual air brake systems. All modern air brake systems are dual air brake systems. And this is noted by the two gauges, the two air gauges on the dash. Either two gauges or one gauge with two needles, a red one and a green one. Interesting that the California CDL manual has a schematic of a single circuit air brake system. They haven't been single circuit since the 1970s. They came up with the division of the system into two separate subsystems, the primary and secondary subsystem as denoted by the two gauges on the dash. The valves that are primarily responsible for dividing the system into a secondary and primary system are the one-way check valves at the entrance to the primary and secondary tanks. And to check those one-way check valves, we go in the truck, take note of the air pressure, which should be over 100 pounds, go out, start draining tanks. The tank that you drain that does not drop the needles on the dash is the wet tank because there isn't an air gauge on the wet tank. There's only a gauge on the primary and secondary tanks. So once you find the wet tank, drain it completely. The gauges on the dash don't drop. That indicates that the one-way check valves are working correctly because the air is not coming back through into the wet tank. And therefore the pressure remains steady, doesn't drop, and the one-way check valves are working. Therefore the division of the subsystems, the secondary and primary system are working normally. Therefore, if one system fails, the other system will continue to work normally so long as the air compressor continues to work. And it's a very rare case that the air compressor actually fails on these air brake systems. So the division of a secondary and a primary system is the one-way check valves as well as the plumbing. So the secondary system works the steer axles, twin steer if you're driving a cement truck or one of those other big manly trucks that has two axles on the front steers. And the primary system runs everything behind the driver. As well, in the manual, it says that there's a two-way check valve between the primary and secondary system and the spring brakes, which are held off by air pressure when you're going up and down the road, takes air pressure from the system that is the higher pressure. So if the secondary system is 120 and the primary system is 100, it will take air from 120. The system is always adjusting pressure because of the most of these vehicles have air ride suspension and the air ride suspension is always exhausting air. So the air compressor is always filling up the system. The system is always fluctuating. As the system fluctuates, uh, the spring brake chambers will take air from whichever system is higher to keep the parking brakes slash emergency brakes in the released position. As well, on the newer systems, the ADIS systems, air dryer integrated systems, the two needles it will fill one system first and then fill the other system. So as it says in the manual, before you start heading on down the road, make sure you have 100 pounds of pressure in the system. And again, to check the low air warning, if either system, either the secondary system or the primary system, falls to 55 pounds per square inch, that low air warning has to activate. So one of the other systems must activate the low air warning before 55 pounds per square inch. Pre-trip inspection for the purposes of your road test. Secure, not damaged, not leaking. When you're looking at components and inspecting them, you point to the component 
Uh, some examiners will want you to have physical contact with the component, secure, not damaged, not leaking. So you basically light touch, secure, not damaged, not leaking. It's secure on the vehicle. It's not damaged. A rock didn't fly up and hit it. It's got a big dent in it. If it does have old damage on it, you can say no new damage and not leaking. 85% of the components on a truck or bus have either air or fluid in them, so it's not leaking. So the compressor, for example, has oil in it and you want to make sure that it's not leaking oil and therefore it is safe and in working condition. You're also going to do some other tests when you get in the cab to ensure that the compressor is working normally. It says in the manual you need to check the belt. If it is belt driven, like I said, they haven't been belt driven since the 1970s, but if they are, push down on the belt mid point between the two pulleys. The belt should not go more than its own width. That will tell you that the belt is proper tension. Belts, you also want to check them for cracks and frays. If it has cracks or frays, it probably needs to be replaced. First part of your pre-trip inspection is to secure the vehicle. Put wheel chocks under the wheels. You want to put a wheel chock in the front and the rear of a wheel on one axle. That way the vehicle is not going to move because it's part of your pre-trip inspection and to listen for air leaks you need to release the air brakes and have air in the system while you're walking around the vehicle because you're always listening for air leaks. You're even going to uh, be able to hear a very minor air leak. So secure the vehicle, release the parking brakes as well. You have to release the parking brakes and have the vehicle secure against movement because you need to do a pry bar test to check that brakes are within adjustment and in order to pull those slack adjusters you have to have the parking brakes released and you need to have more than 100 pounds of air in the system if you don't have more than 100 pounds you're not going to be able to pull on those slack adjusters on the rear of the vehicle because the spring brakes those large powerful springs are not completely released until you have over 100 pounds of pressure in the system so you're set up in preparation to do your pre-trip inspection on the vehicle wheel chocks in open the hood brakes released more than 100 pounds in the system and get your tool and in the manual it says you can pull on those slack adjusters with your hand you are not going to be able to pull on those slack adjusters with your hand and check that they're within proper adjustment you're going to need a pry bar whether that's a screwdriver a crowbar or a specialized pry bar and there those are available at truck stops and whatnot so set up Chalk the wheels, over 100 pounds of pressure in the system, release your parking brakes, open the hood. That's your setup in preparation to do your pre-trip inspection. In the state of California, you have to determine pushrod travel on all the brake chambers on an S-cam type braking system. S-cam foundation brakes are the most common on buses and trucks in this day and age. So you need to determine pushrod travel to determine that the brakes are in fact in adjustment. You're going to have to do the pry bar method and you're going to need a pry bar because it does say in the manual you can use your hand but you're not going to be able to pull those push rods out of the brake chamber. The return spring just has too much pressure on it inside there. So you're going to need a pry bar. You put it in at the clevis pin at the end of the push rod and pry out. With the brakes released, the wheels chalked, and more than 100 pounds of pressure in the system. The push rod should not extend out of the push rod with the pry bar more than one inch. A good measure of that is to use the width of your thumbnail. It shouldn't come out of the brake chamber more than the width of your thumbnail. In the United States, all slack adjusters since 1994 have been automatic slack adjusters. So for more than two decades, we've had automatic slack adjusters on air brake equipped vehicles. It's very unlikely that you're going to find manual slack adjusters on an air brake equipped vehicle in this day and age. As well, when they go in for their MVI inspection, their motor vehicle inspection, anything with uh, manual slack adjusters on it has to be swapped out for automatics or it will not pass its annual or semi-annual inspection. And I'll put a card up here for you for the complete MVI inspection video. So you go around, if you're doing a semi-trailer, it'll have five axles. There'll be two brake chambers on each axle. You have to pull all of the slack adjusters on each axle for the purposes of a road test to determine that the brakes are in adjustment. Now, if you find a brake that's out of adjustment, and oftentimes they're out of adjustment because these slack adjusters don't get enough grease. When they don't get enough grease, the ratchet mechanism inside gets sticky and they won't click over to the next ratchet position. So what you can do is pump the system up to maximum pressure and do what's called a six pack. So you have the wheels chalked, parking brakes released, up to maximum pressure, approximately 125 pounds, make three full 
hard brake applications as much as the system will endure all the way to the floor on the foot pedal three brake applications let it pump back up to maximum again and do three more hard brake applications it's called a six pack oftentimes what happens is because you're making maximum brake applications with more than 100 pounds of pressure in the system that will often walk the slack adjuster back into place if that doesn't work put some grease to it try doing a six pack again that should bring it back into adjustment if the automatic slack adjuster doesn't come back into adjustment at that point you need to seek the help of a mechanic and oftentimes what they'll do is they'll take that slack adjuster off and get it replaced you can adjust automatic slack adjusters but it is seriously not recommended unless you're in the middle of plum 40. plum 40 is plumb in the middle of nowhere and 40 miles from everywhere and usually it's minus 60 when you're there and the truck is broken down and won't go in that case yeah you know adjust it up but the problem with automatic slack adjusters as soon as you adjust them up as soon as you make a brake application they're out of adjustment again so there's really no point oftentimes if they won't go back into adjustment with a six pack or with grease there they simply need to be replaced and again as i said automatic slack adjusters have been around for more than two decades they're reliable and they keep the brakes in adjustment for the purposes of your road test in california pry bar method chalk the wheels release the brakes make sure you got more than 100 pounds do a pry bar on every push rod on the vehicle semi trucks will have five axles they'll have 10 brake chambers check all the push rods if you have a bus it's got three axles six brake chambers you'll have to check all of those some of these low clearance vehicles that you can't get under buses whatnot you probably have to do a verbal explanation of how you would check push rod travel on the vehicle for the purposes of your road test in your walk around on the vehicle your outside visual inspection you're checking drums hoses and linings uh, sometimes on the inside of the drum there will be a dust cover so you won't be able to inspect anything other than the lines to the brake chambers the brake chamber secure not damaged not leaking check your push rod travel the linkages make sure all the cotter pins are in place if the dust cover has fallen off and on many of these trucks these dust covers do fall off because it's just a piece of thin metal on there if it has fallen off you can check the inside of the drum make sure there's no cracks or breaks you can check uh, the brake pad thickness make sure there aren't any breaks or cracks or whatnot in that so it's just a visual inspection of the lines hoses and air tanks and make sure that there aren't any leaks because again you have the parking brakes released more than 100 pounds in the system and the wheels are chalked so the vehicle is uh, secure and it's not going to move or roll over you because if the vehicle rolls over you it's pretty tough to finish a road test however <laughs> You're doing a visual inspection and you're always listening for air leaks during your pre-trip inspection and your walk around of that vehicle. So after you finish your outside walk around, you've checked the push rod travel on all of the brake chambers on all of the axles, leave the wheel chocks in, close up the hood if the vehicle has one, secure the hood, put your tools away, your gloves and get in the vehicle. When you get in the vehicle, fire up the motor and you're going to fan down on the brakes what it means to fan down the brakes is you're going to pump the brake pedal because when you pump the brake pedal the air brake system exhausts the air into the atmosphere after you make a service brake application so by pumping down the system pumping the brake pedal you're going to lower the system's air pressure the low air warning on your air brake equipped vehicle has to activate above 55 pounds per square inch on farm labor vehicles and type 1 school buses it has to be a light and a buzzer most of these vehicles most of these modern vehicles are going to be lights and buzzers uh, they haven't been wig bags as i said for the night since the 1980s almost 30 years so if you have one of those take note that farm labor vehicles and type 1 school buses has to be a light and a buzzer most of these are going to be lights and buzzers anyway might have a wig wag probably not though so first test test the low air warning and just a note about in cab vehicle checks for the purposes of the air brakes it's a bit tougher because it's pure memorization outside of the vehicle it's feel touch see sort of thing but inside the cab straight memorization and it's straight memorization for the particular vehicle that you have so take note of that and uh, one of the things that will help you in terms of the memorization go out and get yourself some flashcards right on the front low air warning test and then on the back write the details of the low air warning test and the thing is you can put those flashcards in your pocket you can carry them around when you're waiting for your significant other at the mall or the dentist or whatever you can take them out and 
quiz yourself about the specific details of the different tests that you have to do for the purposes of your CDL license in the state of California. The next test after you test the low air warning is to test that the spring brakes apply automatically. So after the low air warning comes on, turn the engine off on the truck or bus and you need to turn the engine off because you're still working the compressor and it's just too hard to try and overcome the compressor. It's easier if you turn the truck off and the compressor's not running while you're trying to fan down between 20 and 45. Continue to fan down between 20 and 45. Once you pump between 20 and 45, the four-sided yellow button, the parking control valve on the dash should pop out and the spring brakes will apply automatically. On some buses, they have safety actuator parking brakes. And essentially what a safety actuator parking brake is, is because the bus has low clearance and there isn't enough room underneath the bus to put these large spring brake chambers on them. They have what's called safety actuator parking brakes. Safety actuator parking brakes is essentially a caging mechanism that drops down into the push rod and holds it in the locked position. In order to release that, you need to have air pressure in the system and it extends the push rod out a little bit and the locking mechanism releases. Think of it like a winch on a boat trailer, click, 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 click. And essentially what happens is, is every time it locks up into the next place, it's the caging mechanism on a safety actuator parking brake is similar to that. If you have a bus that has low clearance and probably has safety actuator parking brakes on, the test for the purposes of your license test in California is to pump down to 20 pounds per square inch. The valve will not pop out. It will remain in the off position. Essentially what you do, you may have to go out and remove the wheel chocks, get back in the vehicle, start the engine, put it in a forward gear and try and move forward. The parking brake should be activated. And I do recommend for those people going for a CDL license that you go to a driving school and do a mock road test at least. If you're not doing driving lessons at a driving school, at least go to a driving school and do a mock test on the vehicle that you've been working with so that you know the parameters of what you need to do for the purposes of the license. Because as I say again and again, Driving schools teach people how to pass a road test. They don't teach you how to drive. They teach you how to pass a road test. So make sure that you are going to be successful on your license and get a mock road test done by a local driving school. Spring brake test for triple reservoir vehicles. If you're at a driving school, they're gonna know you have one of these. However, you're gonna to need to figure out whether you have one of these that you pump the air pressure down to 20 and know you have a triple reservoir vehicle. What you need to do is pump down to 20 get out of the vehicle, remove the wheel chocks, get back in the vehicle, start the engine, put it in a forward gear and try and move forward. And the spring brakes should hold the vehicle. If the spring brakes don't hold the vehicle, you're gonna to have to postpone your road test. However, I would strongly suggest that you do a pre-trip inspection before you go down for your license test. That way you know you're gonna be successful and that there isn't gonna be something wrong with the vehicle or some component of the vehicle isn't gonna fail. For example, the spring brakes don't hold when you put it in a forward gear and try and move forward. If you don't do this correctly for the purposes of a road test in California, unfortunately you won't be successful on your road test and we'll have to try again. Check air pressure buildup. The air pressure buildup is essentially the compressor test. You're testing the compressor that it builds a certain amount of air within a set time. In the state of California, they want you to do 85 to 100 pounds within 45 seconds at an idle. Most electronic diesel engines idle at about 600 RPM, so 600 RPM. 85 to 100 pounds within 45 seconds. So you essentially get up to 85 pounds and I would suggest that you start your timer just a little bit before 85 and when you hit 85 pounds, say to the examiner, I started my timer. That way they're not guessing whether you started your timer or not. Let it idle away, 45 seconds, it hits 100 pounds. You say to the examiner, the system built 85 to 100 pounds within 45 seconds the test was successful. On older systems in the state of California pre-1975, and I really hope you're not bringing a 1975 or older vehicle to a road test in California, 50 to 90 within three minutes at a high idle. High idle is 1,000 to 1,200 RPM. That is the compressor test for vehicles older than 1975. You find one of those, really, <laughs> you probably drove it away from the museum. In the state of California, there's two leak tests. The leak tests essentially test the integrity of the system that it's able to hold air and is not going to lose pressure. There's a static leak test that you can do when you essentially pump the system up within the minimum and maximum governor range, which is gonna be between 100 and 125 pounds. Shut the vehicle off, release the parking brakes, 
when the air pressure comes to a rest, you'll see that by the air gauges on the, on the dash. When those come to a rest, you're simply allowed two, three, five pounds. On a single unit bus, truck, semi-trailer, you're allowed to lose two pounds. On a truck and trailer, you're allowed to lose three pounds. And on a truck with multiple trailers, two or three trailers, you're allowed to lose five pounds. Most driving schools are not gonna do a static leak test. Most of them are gonna do an applied leak test. Essentially, you build the system up to maximum pressure. You know the system is at maximum pressure because you hear the air dryer purge and you see that the needles are between 100 and 135 pounds per square inch. Shut the motor off, make a full brake application after the initial drop on the air gauges, three, four, six. You're allowed three pounds on a single unit, semi-trailer, bus, or truck. You're allowed four pounds on a truck and trailer, and you're allowed six pounds on a truck and two trailers or multiple trailers. So make sure you shut the engine off when you do a leak test because otherwise you're just working against the compressor and you're not going to lose any air because the compressor is always filling the system back up. So before you do your leak test and apply the brakes, make sure you shut the engine off. When you start your in cabs, the cut in and cut out tests are probably going to be the first test that you do in the cab. It's just a lot easier in terms of the sequence that you have to do for the test. But that will depend on the driving school that you go to. They will have a particular sequence that they do for the in cab test. So cut out test, pump the system up to maximum pressure. It should cut out before 130 pounds. So somewhere between 100 and 130 pounds, the governor will put the compressor into the cutout phase, which means that it is pumping air into the atmosphere and no longer in the system. How you know the system is at maximum pressure, you will hear the air dryer purge and you will see and confirm that the needles are between 100 and 130 pounds. It must cut out before 130 pounds per square inch. As it says in the manual and the note is, is that the governor cutout is not signified by the air dryer unloading. You will hear the air dryer unloading, but if the governor is broken and unloads the system at 80 pounds, for example, the air dryer will still purge because it's connected to the governor's maximum cutout pressure. So that is not an indication. You need to confirm that the governor has put the compressor into the cutout phase by looking at your air needles and making sure that they're no longer climbing. Think of it like a glass of water. When you stop putting water in the glass of water, the water level remains static. So same thing with the air tanks. When you stop putting air into the tanks, the pressure stops going up. So the needles have stopped climbing between 100 pounds and 130 pounds. To test cut in pressure, pump down to 100 pounds, throttle up a little bit and watch for the needles to start climbing. When the needles start climbing, you know that the governor has returned the compressor to the cut in phase. On a truck, it has to return to the load phase or cut in phase by 100 pounds. And on a bus in the state of California, it has to return to the load phase or the cut in phase by 85 pounds. The last part of your pre-trip inspection is to test both the service brakes and the parking brakes. And the way you do that is apply the parking brakes because you need to secure the vehicle for removing the wheel chocks. Get out of the vehicle, remove the wheel chocks, stow the wheel chocks, usually in the jockey box or wherever they live on the vehicle. Get back into the vehicle and test both the service brakes and the parking brakes. Apply the parking brakes, put the vehicle in a low forward gear, try and move forward, the parking brakes work. Release the parking brakes, roll forward a few feet and apply the service brakes and release the service brakes. The service brakes is a response test. It's that they apply and they release. Then at the end, the last part of your pre-trip inspection, apply the parking brakes and fill out your CDL pre-trip form. You need to fill out the paperwork as part of your pre-trip inspection because a commercial driver has to fill out paperwork to say that they completed a pre-trip inspection and that the vehicle is safe for operation. You want the complete video on filling out the pre-trip form, I'll put a card up here for you for that video. On a semi-truck tractor trailer, there are four tests. Parking brake on the truck, parking brake on the trailer, service brake on the trailer, and service brake on the truck. So there's four brake tests that you're gonna do before you drive away. Doesn't matter what order you do them in, just as long as you do all four of them. So parking brake on the truck, with the trailer parking brakes released, try and move forward, the vehicle doesn't move. Release the truck parking brakes, and apply the trailer parking brakes, try and move forward, the vehicle doesn't move. Release both brakes, push in the red and yellow button on the dash, roll forward a few feet, apply the foot pedal, the vehicle comes to a stop, the brakes release, roll forward a couple more feet, pull down on the hand valve and the trailer service brakes work. 
put your parking brakes on and again fill out your pre-trip inspection form as the final part of your pre-trip inspection. Review questions. I'm going to go over the review questions for section 5.2 of the California CDL air brake manual. Turn off the video, answer the questions, and then come back and we'll go over the questions together. What is a dual air brake system? A dual air brake system is the division of an air brake system into two independent subsystems, a primary and a secondary. The primary subsystem operates everything behind the driver and the secondary system operates everything in front of the driver, oftentimes the brake chambers on the steer axle. The valves that are primarily responsible for dividing the system into a primary and secondary subsystem are the one-way check valves at the entrance to the primary and secondary tanks. And if you have an older system, pre-ADIS, air dryer integrated system, you need to drain the wet tank to create a vacuum behind the one-way check valves and check your gauges in the, on the dash in the vehicle to ensure that they haven't dropped. That way you know the one-way check valves are working and the primary and secondary subsystems are working as well. And in the event of a brake loss, so long as the compressor is working normally, if you lose one system, the other system will continue to work normally. Now, you will have reduced braking capability, but you will be able to bring that vehicle to a stop. That at least is the hope and dream. So make sure that the low air warning comes on and you look down and one of the gauges is sitting on the bottom and you will know because the low air warning will come on regardless of which gauge drops. Increase your following distance and start looking for a safe place to get that vehicle off the road. So dual air brake system, the division of the system into two independent subsystems. What are slack adjusters? Slack adjusters allow you to keep air brakes in adjustment. During normal use of the service brakes as you go up and down the road, the brake pads inside the drum assembly wear and the brake pad becomes less and there becomes slack in the adjustment to make up for that slack. The slack adjusters keep the brakes in adjustment. There's a ratchet mechanism inside the automatic slack adjuster that adjusts and keep the clearance between the drum and the brake shoes within proper tolerance. During most brake applications and when the brakes are adjusted up properly, the clearance between the brake drum and the shoe is approximately three pieces of paper. So the slack adjuster allows for that wear of the brake shoes during normal operation and compensates for that and it keeps the brakes within adjustment and maintains that clearance between the brake shoe and the brake pad. Slack adjusters can be either automatic or manual. It's not likely in this day and age that you're going to encounter a manual slack adjuster. You'll know it's a manual slack adjuster because it's sleeker and it has a 9 16 nut, adjusting nut, with a locking collar on it. That's how you know it's a manual slack adjuster, but it's not likely you're going to encounter a manual slack adjuster as well. Automatic slack adjusters have been mandated on all commercial vehicles for more than 20 years now and have proven reliable. So either manual or automatic slack adjusters, in most cases, 99% of the time, you're going to encounter automatic slack adjusters. How can you check slack adjusters? The way that you check slack adjusters in the state of California is with the pry bar method or sometimes called the free stroke method. You simply pump air pressure in the system above 100 pounds, chalk the wheels, release the parking brakes and get out and use a pry bar to pull the push rod out of the brake chamber. The push rod should not extend out of the brake chamber more than one inch in the state of California. For most purposes, it shouldn't extend out of the brake chamber more than the width of your thumbnail using a pry bar. And you can measure that. You just mark it at the face of the brake chamber or some other fixed point and then pull it out with a pry bar. That is an acceptable method of how you check pushrod travel on an air brake equipped vehicle in the state of California. How do you test a low air warning device on an air brake equipped vehicle? You simply pump the brakes down and the low air warning, usually a light and a buzzer in most cases, will come on above 55 pounds per square inch. On a lot of vehicles, it'll come at a higher pressure, oftentimes around 80 pounds per square inch. So you simply fan the brakes down because when you pump the brakes on an air brake equipped vehicle, it exhausts the air into the atmosphere after the service brake application is released, thus lowering the pressure in the system. So just pump the brakes and it will lower the air pressure in the system and you can check the low air warning on your air brake equipped vehicle. How do you check that the spring brakes come on automatically? Again, once you get down to the low air warning, comes on, the buzzer and the light continue to fan down. Actually, the easier way to do it is to turn the motor off as soon as the low air warning comes on 
and then continue to pump down because once you get down below 55 pounds, the compressor works pretty hard to keep that air pressure up in the system. So turn the engine off, that way you're not working against the air compressor. Continue to fan down. On an S-CAM foundation brake system, the spring brakes will come on automatically between 20 and 45. So essentially the parking brake, the four-sided yellow parking brake button on the dash, and the eight-sided red octagon button, if you're driving a truck and trailer, will pop out between 20 and 45. There's a couple of ways that you can check that the brakes are actually applied on the vehicle. One is you can go out to the trailer if you got a trailer and the push rod and slack adjuster should be at approximately a 90 degree angle when the brakes are applied. The other way you can do it is get out, remove the wheel chalk, get back in, put the vehicle in a forward gear and try and move against the parking brakes and the vehicle shouldn't move. If you have a triple reservoir vehicle, this is one of the things that you're going to have to do. And if you have a bus with safety actuator parking brakes, which is a caging mechanism that drops into the push rod and holds it in the locked position. As well, you're gonna to have to pump down. The buttons on the dash won't pop out, but you're gonna to have to get out and remove the wheel chocks, get back in, put it in a forward gear, and see if in fact that the spring brakes have applied. What are the maximum leakage rates? In the state of California, you can either do a static leak test or an applied leak test. On a static leak test, it's two, three, five. On an applied leak test, it's three, four, six. Three pounds for a single unit, truck, bus, semi-trailer. Four pounds for truck and trailer. Six pounds for truck and multiple trailers. Two trailers, three trailers, four trailers. Although most of the time it's only gonna be two trailers. Static leak test, two, three, five. On an applied leak test, which is requirements for the state of California in terms of doing a leak test, it's three, four, six. Three pounds for single unit, four pounds for truck and trailer, and six pounds for truck and two trailers. In this section, we covered 5.2 and 5.3 of the CDL air brake manual for the state of California, the dual air brake system, and the pre-trip inspection requirements you have to do for the purposes of getting your CDL license. The dual air brake system, the division of the system into a primary and secondary subsystem, one system will continue to work if the other fails and the compressor continues to work and will allow you to bring your vehicle to a safe stop. As well, the requirements for the pre-trip inspection, the walk around, secure, not damaged, not leaking. The setup, put your wheel chocks in, make sure the system's over 100 pounds and release the parking brakes. You have to check push rod travel on all of the brake chambers on your vehicle for the purposes of determining that the vehicle has air brakes that are in adjustment and you have to have air brakes that are in adjustment because it's one of the most common reasons that drivers are pulled into weigh scales and put out of service because brakes are out of adjustment. So as part of your daily pre-trip inspection, you have to determine that the air brakes are in adjustment. In the state of California, you're allowed to do a pry bar method and essentially the push rod cannot extend out of the brake chamber more than one inch. And one of the ways to do that is to mark the push rod at a fixed point and just use your thumbnail. It shouldn't come out more than the width of your thumbnail. As well, the in-cab checks, low air warning, making sure that the spring brakes come on automatically between 20 and 45. Do a buildup test or testing the compressor that it builds air between 85 and 100 pounds at an idle which is about 600 RPM, and it has to do that within 45 seconds. As well, you're gonna test the minimum setting of the governor. In the state of California, the governor has to return the compressor to the load phase, or the cut-in phase, rather, before 100 pounds. On a bus, it can do it at 85 pounds or above. Last one is to do a leak test, and it's an applied leak test in the state of California, and your leak test, shut the engine off, full brake application with the parking brakes released, and you're not allowed to lose more than three pounds on a single unit, bus, truck, semi-trailer, four pounds on a truck and trailer, and six pounds on a truck with more than two trailers. <laughs> Finally, as part of your pre-trip inspection, apply the parking brakes, get out, remove your wheel chocks, get back in the vehicle, put the vehicle in a low forward gear, test the parking brakes on a truck and trailer if you have a trailer and as well test the service brakes on both the truck and the trailer. I'm Rick with Smart Drive Test. Thanks very much for watching. If you like what you see here, share, subscribe, leave a comment down in the comment section. All of that helps us out. As well, if you're working towards your CDL license, check out the videos below. 
great information for being successful on your license as well there's great information for those of you embarking on either a career as a bus or truck driver if you're on a mobile device check out the cards in the upper right hand corner there those will give you links to the other videos for getting your cdl license and great information for bus and truck drivers Question for my smart driver, how did you go about memorizing the in-cab checks that you had to do as part of your air brake pre-trip? The low air warning, testing minimum setting of the governor, and so forth and so on. Leave a comment down in the comment section. All of that helps the other drivers who are working towards their CDL air brake. Thank you very much for watching. Good luck on your road test. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day. Bye now. if you don't uh, uh, secure the vehicle with the parking brakes before you